Okay, let me check if I'm online. And this is my very first live streaming on this channel of me. Let me check if I'm online. It will take 20 seconds. It says 20 seconds, but but I guess I'm coming and if I'm online, then we're gonna start. Why the sound is not working and I don't know. Why the sound is not working and I don't know. Okay, this is me, Elisa Des. I'm online and hey everyone. Today we're gonna talk about the computational chemistry and it's uh, and it's some of the uh, applications and what is the future of computational chemistry and many other things. So, welcome to Learn Computational Chemistry with Elisa Des to my YouTube channel. Okay, so what computational chemistry? You know that I have made many videos on this and you can watch this on my YouTube channel or you can go to my Facebook page with the same name of this uh, YouTube channel, which is Learn Computational Chemistry with Ali Asler. Sorry, that is Ali Asler, and let me just remove this line in here. Okay, computational. Okay, so let me remove this and let's talk about the computational chemistry. Okay. This is a, an attractive field nowadays in the world, the computational chemistry. You know that everyone is wants to learn computational chemistry. And as you know that if you don't know about the MS office, you cannot be a good scientist. You cannot do work in science. You cannot write the thesis and you cannot write any paper. So same is the case. If you don't know computational chemistry very soon, you will not able to do research effectively and efficiently. So therefore, therefore you must learn computational chemistry. Okay. So you, you should know that the chemists have been doing computations for centuries, but the field we know computational chemistry today is all because of the digital age. You know, like they were doing computations, but there was no computer. There was no computer to do computation in a better way and in the hard way. Do you know? Okay. There are three scientists, you know the name. Maybe these are very famous, like Martin Karplas, Michael Levitt, and Ari Warshall, who won the Nobel Prize in 2013. So these three scientists, number one, Martin Karplas. Martin Karplas. Okay. A little difficult name. I think I shouldn't use this one. Martin Karplas. Michael Levitt. Michael Levitt. And this is single T. Okay. I just Washer, three scientists, Nobel Prize, 2000 and Nobel. Yes, yes, yes. So they got the Nobel team. The work they did in 1970, in 1970, they laying the foundation of computer principles. So the classical physics, classical physics, what they do, they combine the physics, the laws, the we Newton. Newton and quantum. For this field of computational chemistry and their this computation. Okay. So these are the things that the particles today. The team, this is uh, where they had done hundred and and then thirteen two K. Uh, other scientists that we and I'm uh, were uh, uh, to pronounce Molina and put role that put these names are not like this and these are changed to pronounce the name. these names constructing models for Composes. They did the work. These three scientists in uh, the one prize, like the first, the of the quantum physics, 
fine and they kind and explain me uh, mathematical and mathematical models all because of these three scientists but these I told you these uh, to pronounce Paul Crutin. Paul Crutin. Oh, that, uh, you can write me if the print is not right of the. And uh, Mario Molina. Mario. And this then position and the atmosphere. And sorry, he used some of the laws. Okay, to do these things. He was not uh, at 1798. He had. Uh, it wasn't called a different field on post scientists the chemist Nobel for the and then it's and computer the GFT which is most probably uh, mostly most widely and every scientist in the world when they are traditional chemistry or any experimental work so they also work on the EFT because most method now the math you can just watch the last level that they can you you can know about these scientists and these things. Okay, so the DFT important names in the computational chemistry. Uh, these three names I told you before, and these names are very different, very very important. Now the computational chemistry, you know that the chem computational chemistry chemists daily work in influences or understanding of the way the world works and helps manufacturer design. Uh, more productive and efficient processes characterizes new compounds and materials and help other researchers uh, researchers exact useful knowledge uh, from mountains of data the computational chemistry is also used to study the fundamental properties of atoms molecules and chemical reactions for example the reactions going on uh, using quantum mechanics and thermo uh, the therm thermodynamic uh, thermodynamics they, they, they know about uh, what they study, they study about the characterization and they know about the, the, the geometry of, of a compound. They, uh, first of all, they, what they do, they, uh, they uh, optimize the structure and when they optimize the structure, they know exactly about the energy of that compound, energy of that structure and when they know about the energy of that structure, they can know about the properties of that structure. So therefore, they help the design, the, the, the manufacturers to design new compounds, they help the the the, uh, the other scientists to design new and to, to to synthesis new drugs as well and new compounds in the world so therefore it influences what they do they they, they bring the knowledge from mountains of data there's a, there a lot of data and you know the, the 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 very big application of this computational chemistry is that if you know the computational chemistry then you can uh, uh, you can save your time like if you're doing if you work in computational chemistry sorry experimental chemistry uh, in that chemistry most probably you will use a lot of time you can use a lot of uh, chemicals and it will just take a lot of time and it will take a lot of money and if you want to save your money, you want to save your time, then you must know about the computational chemistry. So therefore, computational chemistry is very, very much important in these things. So computational chemists use mathematical algorithms. What they use, this is very important that you should know that they use the mathematical algorithm, algorithms and statistics and large databases. Now, now the, these are the three things you should know. What they use? Anyone who is here online? I don't know because this is my new channel and very less people come here and very less people are interested in computational chemistry actually and you know that most of the people that don't know the knowledge of this computational chemistry so I, I can just talk about it in my own way <laughs> okay so what they use I told you that they use what the algorithms statistics and large database they use the algorithms algorithms statistics statistics and and also they use the large database now when they use these things database so they use the algorithms statistics and the large database to in to integrate the chemical theory and modeling with experimental observations some Computational chemists create models and simulations of physical properties and other, uh, others use statistics and data analysis techniques to extract useful information from large bodies of data. 
Advances in computational computer visualization capabilities make it possible for the computational chemists to present complex analysis in a readily understandable form when which they can use uh, to design experiments and new materials and validate the results. Maybe you know that the, nowadays um, there are two ways like you can use the windows and you can also use the Linux. Before the Linux had only commands and there was no visualization in the computer but now in the Linux even you can see a lot of visualizations. You can just see the structure, you can draw the structure, you can see the properties like you can just uh, rotate. You were unable to use the gas view before but now this is very easy to use the gas view on your Linux as well. So therefore like these you know you can see this the, the computer system programs they are widened and they give you more details of the structures and they give you more details about the experimental design, designs and the other things so computational chemists may use simulations to identify sites on protein molecules that are most likely to burn a new drug molecule or create models of, of uh, synthesis reactions to demonstrate the effects of kinetics and thermodynamics on the amount and the kinds of products okay so they can also explore the basic principle the basic physical processes underlying phenomena such as uh, superconductivity energy storage and corrosion or phase changes now coming towards the pharmaceutical industry as you know that pharmaceutical in the there is a very wide implication no, there is there are a lot of wide implications of the computational chemistry in the pharmaceutical industries as well so a major employer of computational chemists has historically focused on the discovery and design of new small molecular therapeutics recently uh, there is a trend to apply computational chemistry and uh, chemi informatics maybe you know about this chemi informatics is very much uh, uh, popular because this is a field that combines the laboratory data and uh, the chemical modeling and information science methods. So this this chem informatics is very much uh, growing field nowadays, and different scientists work in this field to process development analytical chemistry, biological, it is medicinal products manufactured using or extracted from the biological sources. Okay, so computational chemists may use high performance computer as you know that the supercomputers and the clusters they use and uh, uh, computer cluster, computing cluster is very important because if you want to do um, a huge calculations we so we call it expensive like it takes time in high computer therefore the cluster the use of the clusters is very important to solve the problems and create simulations that require massive amounts of data. So tools of computational chemistry chemists include electronic structure method, microdynamic simulation, quantitative structure relationship, chem informatics, and full statistic analysis. These things I'm going to write it in here. Electronic structure method, electronic structure method. In, in electronic structure, you just know about the electron and, the elect and the, you, you can know about the properties through. Okay, so the first is electronic structure method, molecular dynamic, dynamic simulation, molecular, molecular dynamic simulation. You should know that this molecular dynamic simulation is this is also called the M. Simulation. Okay, the third one that you should know that the, the, the chemists do that is structure activity relationship quantitative quantity activity. We call it QSAR as well. QSAR. And the work is the qualitative 
स्ट्रक्चर